Hey, um, tonight, it's a bit weird. I'm not actually introducing another speaker. I'm, I'm introducing myself. I get to talk with you guys. Um, so I'm really excited. And what I want to do is just quickly pray. And we're going to have a time where I share some stories about some things and eventually just jump into God's Word. So let's pray together and we'll jump right into it. Father, I thank you for the time we've had so far the evening, this evening. Thank you, Lord, that you've kept us safe, that we've been able to enjoy good music, sports, comedies, technology, and each other's company. Lord, I ask that as we come tonight to hear from your word, that as we sit listening, that you would be speaking to us. I ask, Father, that tonight we would learn something new about you and that that would change the way we live our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. So, Father, tonight as I'm speaking, I ask that you would speak through me, that these words would be your words and not my words, that as the young guys and girls are listening, that they would hear what's been said, remember what's been said, and think about ways that they could potentially apply it to their lives. So, Lord, be with us tonight. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, so... I feel like every week I'm up here, I'm just introducing other people, and it's been ages since I last spoke. So I want to begin tonight by sharing some life-changing news from the holidays. It seems like a long time ago, but something radical happened on the holiday for Kat and I. Um, we had our very first baby. Now, before you celebrate, I should specify, we had a baby dog. Oh, yeah. Um, so we brought a dog on the holidays. And before I go any further, I want to make it really clear. When I say we had a baby, I mean we had a baby as in something I got to look after. I don't mean I had a baby as in I got a human being living in my house other than for cat and I. Because I know a dog's a dog. I don't, I don't change your nappies. I don't, I don't dress her up with clothes or anything weird like that. I have a dog. A dog's an animal. So I get that. But I want to show you some pictures in a second of my dog, Ruby, because ever since I've had Ruby, she has totally transformed my life and Kat's life. So if you look at the picture, this is what Ruby looked like the day we met her. Oh, wow. There's girls in this crowd. She's five weeks old in this picture. And I got to be honest, I didn't really want a dog. So I'm like, I'm like a husband. I'm a good husband. My wife is like dog clucky. If she could have dogs, she would have had them years ago. She's been desperately waiting. So she says, you know, blah, 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 I want a dog. And eventually I go, all right, I'll, I'll get us a dog. So we went down to these breeders. And as we met Ruby along with her brothers and sisters, I'm going, do I really want a dog? And my wife's going, that's our baby right there. And I'm going, oh, sure, whatever. So um, Ruby, right, she has a mom like all of us. Next picture. And uh, you'll notice that the mom is white and the black things are Ruby. She's in there with her brothers and sisters. Now, Ruby's a black Labrador, her mum is a white Labrador, and her dad is a chocolate Labrador. So that means that Ruby has um, the potential to have a mixed breed, chocolate, white, and black dogs if she ever had babies. Um, what was really cool is the mum, you can't see her head or anything like that in this picture, but when we met the mum, the mum's so beautiful, the, the breeders... They had this little baby girl, and the, the mother dog, the white one, was just you know, really gentle and soft with her. And then whenever the babies, the, the puppies, wanted to feed, the mum just stood there and just let them latch on to these things. And um, <laughs> I was just like, I, just, I think it would hurt, right? Dog's teeth are sharp. But anyway, um, the mum was awesome. But on that very, very first day with Ruby, I actually realized that she was the one for us when this happened. Next picture. I love food. That is dog food, and that's Ruby trying to break open into some dog food. And I was just like, you know what? If my dog's going to try steal food right in front of me, that's it. I'm sold. I'm going to get this dog because I've, I've spent my entire childhood stealing food from my parents. My mum, she used to hide chocolate in her tampon drawer. <laughs> I still ate it, which means I found it in the first place. True story. My dad... He hid his chocolate between his underwear. Ate that too. True story. Anyway, um, we're talking about dogs. A few weeks after we got Ruby, um, we, well, sorry, a few weeks later, we were able to pick up Ruby. She was seven weeks old. There's this picture of her afterwards. And um, it was like this bittersweet moment because on the one hand, it was like, yes, we're getting a dog, we're getting a baby, we're getting a girl, this is going to be awesome. And on the other hand, we had to take Ruby away from her brothers and her sisters and her mum. 
And uh, this was the last time that Ruby saw her sister. Ruby's got the um, purple collar and the, the, the girl getting her ear bitten by my dog. That's Ruby saying goodbye. All right, goodbye, have a little ear munch. And I felt terrible as we picked Ruby up because I knew she was never going to see her family again. And I just sort of hope that she's in a better place living with us. Um, in the next picture, we're on our car trip home. And it's a little bit hard to see because these are all taken with a you know, phone camera. And as we're driving home, Ruby was so freaked out. She was, she was shaking in the car. She wouldn't settle for quite some time. And she, she didn't like us at all. Like she kept just sort of running away from us, which is kind of freaky because you're trying to drive and you only got a small back seat in our car. But um, eventually, she fell asleep half in this cat pen, half out of it. And I was, I was really happy because we bought it from Narrage and that's like two hours away. But the <laughs> anyway. Um, when we got back at home, that's when Ruby and I had our very first ever fight because I had to wake her up to bring her out of the car into the house. And as I'm trying to wake her up, she sort of wakes up and she's like, who the heck is this big scary guy? And she crawled right into the back of that cage, lay down, dug her claws in. And I'm like, what, what do I do? Like, I'm a brand new dad. I got no idea. I'm like, here, yeah, doggy, come, 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 Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. Dog's like, what is this guy on about? So we had a fight. I pulled her out and she was like all shaking and crazy and um, it was one of those scary moments where I was like, have I just scarred my dog for life? She's going to hate me forever. I was seriously stressed out about these things, right? Um, we've even sent our dog to a dog psychologist already. It's weird. I blame my wife for that one. Anyway, Ruby and I actually do get on really, really well. Um, in the next picture, Ruby is 10 weeks old and she's in my arms over there while we're watching some TV. She started to grow up. And, and having a dog, having a puppy has actually taught me a whole lot about fatherhood and it's even taught me a little bit about what it means to be a better husband because, you see, what I've realized since I've got this dog is that I've been always, always needing to put someone else or something else before myself. And guys, if you're sitting here and you want to have a girlfriend, that's a lesson you guys should learn straight away. Having a girlfriend, it's not actually about kissing them in the corner. Having a girlfriend is not about everything you want. It is about serving another person. You do that, trust me, you'll go a long, long way. So Ruby's, Ruby's my second girl. I got my wife, she's my girl, I got my dog, she's my other girl. And my job with Ruby is to protect her. My job with Ruby is to look after her. I have to train her and we have heaps of fun together. We, we learn tricks. I've taught Ruby how to sit. I've taught her how to lie down. I've taught her how to come. I've taught her how to walk around and stand on my head on the heel. Um, I've sort of taught her how to roll over. That's really Cat's one. She gets stuck halfway with me, but Cat can get her to roll over the entire way around. I've started teaching Ruby how to stay. She can stay for about 20 seconds before she runs away, which is pretty good for a young dog. I've even taught Ruby how to kiss. Yeah. Now, this is the way it works. I pick Ruby up into my arms and um, I kiss her cheeks. And then I say kisses and I turn my cheek to her. Now it's not all tongue and all the rest of it. What Ruby does, is she pushes her nose on my cheek and then she just sticks her tongue out a little bit so that I can just feel it on my cheek. Problem is with Ruby, sometimes she gets kisses right, sometimes she goes crazy. When she goes crazy, it's real bad. There's like this tongue all over the place, in my ear, in my eyes. One time she's busy kissing me and I'm trying to say, no, Ruby, kisses, not slobbers. And as I'm saying kisses, not slobbers, the tongue's like right in my mouth. <laughs> what was really weird? Her like, tongue went round my lip and across my teeth. And I'm just like, what do I do? She, she, she licks herself. She licks both ends and her... <laughs> anyway. Um... That, that, that's enough of Ruby for now. I, I wanted to show you that that's, that's me and Ruby. We're about to play kisses at that point. I haven't actually got pictures of us kissing because, um, I don't know, that's, that's dodgy. But um, <laughs> that, that's Ruby, and I wanted just to start by talking about her because she's really important. She's central to my life at the moment. And the stories I just shared, they really pretty much pointless. Later on, I'm going to talk about Ruby again, and when I talk about her again, I guarantee I'll be making a point. But uh, tonight, it's, I want to get focused. We're looking at um, Man on a Mission. And as I was recapping earlier, I talked about Hayer's talk, where she reminded us that Jesus knew exactly what his mission was. And it was because Jesus knew what his mission was, when he was out in the desert, and you have to have been there a few weeks ago to remember what I'm talking about, when, when Jesus was out in the desert, he had this encounter with the devil. 
where the devil tempted Jesus and they had this sort of cosmic battle out in the wilderness. And Jesus says, well, you know what? I know who I am. I know what I'm supposed to be doing and I know what I'm going to do. Therefore, devil, that is it. I will not have anything to do with what you're saying. There was absolutely no distracting him. And see, the reality is that if you go back a few weeks, Hayes says, all right, so there's no distracting Jesus because he knew what his mission was. And then she fired the question, so do you guys know what your mission is? And that's what I want to unpack a little bit. Do you know what your mission is? See, a bunch of you, you're probably sitting here going, what is all this mission business about? I don't have a mission. I've never even thought about having a mission beforehand. But I guarantee, if you are a person, if you're breathing, you've got legs and arms and eyes, and you have a mission. Every single person has a mission. Now, some of you are like, I've got no idea what you're talking about, but I can guarantee that if I were to watch you living on a day-to-day -day basis, your actions would reveal your mission. Everybody's actions reveal their mission. So most of our actions involve passing time trying to make ourselves happy. So for most people, happiness is our mission. And we do all sorts of things to make ourselves happy. And first, I want to make this really clear. There's nothing wrong with happiness. Like, really? I hope that you guys are happy. I can guarantee you right now that I'm a really happy person. I, I love what I do. I love teaching, believe it or not. I absolutely love my wife. I love God. I, I wouldn't be here doing this if I didn't love doing it. I'm really happy I get a kick out of doing this stuff. But if your mission is only happiness, and I can see your mission by your actions, if it's only happiness... What I want to say to you guys is I don't think that's a big enough mission. I think there's bigger things that we can live for. And, and, and particularly tonight, I want to focus on the mission that God gives us, just one small aspect of the mission that God gives us. Uh, if you've ever grabbed a Bible, it's helpful to do that sometimes, or if you've got the app on your iPhone, um, there's this awesome story in Matthew where a religious leader comes up to Jesus and says, Hey, Jesus, uh, what I want you to do is to tell me what the most important law or commandment is. Now, what you have to get is that when this leader's coming up to Jesus and saying, Hey, Jesus, what's the most important law? This is a trap. There's over 630 different laws, and he's saying, What's the most important? And if Jesus were to start ranking them, one, it would be a memory test, two, it's literally impossible to try and get the order right. If I said this is number one, someone else said that's actually number five. If he said that was number two, someone said actually that's number three. So it was trapping Jesus into a debate. But Jesus, seeing this question, realizing it was a trap, he grabs all the laws that rule their society, all the commands, and he decides to get straight to the heart of them. The real reason that there's laws and commands in the Bible, and he says simply this, the most important law, and he summarizes is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. And he doesn't stop there. It's the second most important commandment, is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love God, love yourself. Love God, love others. It's really quite simple. Love God, love others. And, and this is the mission that Jesus gives each and every single one of us. And I think that when you start to hear that whole idea of love God, love others, we get stuck on this love God component. Love God. Why would I love God? I don't actually like him. This God character is a control freak, right? I mean, this God character, he gives us a list of rules. And I can understand... If you think that God is just a controlling, angry person, of course you can't love him. Who loves angry, controlling people? But the reality is, if you actually take the time to look at who God is, what his character is like, nothing can be further from the truth. God is not about a list of rules. He's not about controlling you like a puppet and how you behave. Very much, if you choose to become a Christian, you are totally free to do whatever you like, whenever you like. So I'm a Christian, and being a Christian has freed me to drive really fast if I want to. It's illegal, but nothing in my face says, Mr. Harris, you can't drive fast. My religion, my faith, frees me to eat steak for breakfast, lunch, and dinner if I want. There's nothing in the Bible that says you cannot eat that. I can dance horizontally with whomever I want, whenever, how many times. My faith, knowing God, does not stop me from doing those things. You've got to get that. As a Christian, I'm free. But because I'm a Christian... I understand that God calls me to a better life. And that